Welcome to the Deep Post Sports Chat. I'm Drew Rubenstein. I'm with Ed Owens. We're back at Floyd Casey Stadium where number 17 Baylor just demolished WVU 73-42. Wasn't even close. It was 56-14 at halftime. For all intents and purposes, it was over. What's, what's most concerning for the Mountaineers coming out of this lopsided loss? I, I think the most concerning thing is everything fell apart tonight. At least in, in the past, you could say the offense wasn't working and, and the defense was able to carry them through. It's hard to find positives defensively tonight, too. They were absolutely shredded. 864 Four yards of offense for Baylor tonight. Big 12 record. Uh, most WVU's ever given up in a game. Uh, second most points WVU's ever given up in a game. I mean, you can you can pile on the superlatives in the negative direction. It's really hard to find positives for WVU tonight. We'll start with Baylor. Is this the best team in the Big 12 in your opinion? Yeah, from what we've seen, I'd say this is definitely the best team. Uh, from the teams we haven't seen, it's going to be hard to top it. Uh, Baylor, Baylor was pretty much unstoppable on offense. They had uh, three drives of, of three plays or less, two one-play drives in there. Uh, WVU just didn't have the answers for them. And defensively, Baylor did what, what a lot of teams have been doing, and, and that's confusing WVU. It's not letting them get going. It's not letting them get that momentum, which is something we talked about earlier tonight. Uh, they, they just really, both sides of the ball, shut them down. Baylor look great offensively and you knew going in that if they got their offense rolling they were capable of putting up these kinds of numbers and they did on WVU. Um, looking at the Mountaineers side of things on the offensive side things kind of stalled early. Dana went for it on a fourth down and I thought that was kind of the, the turning point of the game. Would, would you agree with that? Yeah, things definitely stalled early. Uh, there were there were two times early on where he, he yanked Clint Trickett because of communication issues. He said that in his post-game press conference. They just weren't getting the plays called. Uh, he put Paul Millard in. There was no continuity. They really had a hard time getting this offense together. Um, I yeah, I'd say it, it went off the wheel, or went off the rails earlier in this game, and, and they just never found a way to get it back on track. Is WVU's defense as bad as it looked tonight, or is is Baylor's offense even better than it was last season? Yeah, I don't think. WVU use defense as bad as they look tonight. Uh, and, and the guys in there, they, they were not necessarily upbeat, but they, they realized the mistakes they made and they know how to fix it, or they think they know how to fix it at this point. WVU's proven in the last few games that they can slow teams down, if not shut them down. I mean, they've been playing good defense to this point in the season. Baylor's just really, really good. I mean, they're on a completely different level. Yeah, I, I don't know that they'll see another offense quite like this one. That said, West Virginia is 5-9 in its last 14 games. Six of those losses have come by 21 or more points. Is that concerning for WVU? That is this becoming a trend? The the lopsided losses and is that concerning? Yeah, I think that's absolutely got to be a concern for them. And uh, the the more this happens, the tougher it's going to be for them to come back. Uh, the guys seemed pretty beat down after the game. Clint Trickett had a hard time talking. Paul Millard came out. He had a hard time talking. Offensively, I think they're just looking for answers. Defensively, like I said before, they think they found them, but now they have to wait two weeks before they can figure out if, if that's real or not. That was the last one I was going to ask. WVU, worst record that it's had since 2003, I believe, when they started 1-4 and four and they rallied together. WVU's now 3-3 three and three this season, so we'll see how they go. Does this bye week come out at a good time or a bad time, in your opinion? Yeah, uh, with the exception of Darwin Cook, who said he He's pretty angry after this loss. A lot of guys said mentally, physically, this comes at a really good time for them. They need to regroup. They need to figure things out. They've got number 20, Texas Tech, 5-0 and coming in uh, two weeks from now. They're going to need these two weeks to game plan and, and really get themselves back. All right, absolutely. Thanks a lot for your time, Ed. And please continue to check vdpost.com for all the latest on the Mountaineers. Thanks for tuning in again.